Five, what is its nobility next to the other sciences? It is considered to be one of the most noble sciences due to the statement of Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he said what could mean the best of you are those who learn the Quran and teach it. Khayrakum man ta'allam al-Qur'ana wa'allama wa khiyarakum man ta'allam al-Qur'ana wa'allama and this is a famous hadith and it says, you know, the best of you or the, the most choicest ones of you are those who learn the Quran and teach it. So that tells you that it's nobility next to the other sciences. The best of those are those who learn the Quran and teach it. What is learning the Quran if it's not learning how to recite it first? Learning what, how it's supposed to be said. How can you say you know a thing if you don't even know how to recite it? You can't even read it and recite it properly. Then you do not know it. You don't know anything about it. Maybe you know the cover, what it looks like, but can you read it? Okay, so the best of those are those who do that. And this is in these, these numbers here represent where that can be found in an authentic hadith books. So our collections, I should say. This nobility is also due to its attachment to the most noble book, the Qur'an, and the most noble messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Six, what sciences or subjects is it, is it, related, it is related to, or is it related to? Tajweed is related to the sciences of Arabic, Qira'ah, and Tafsir. Let's talk about that for a second. What is, how is Tajweed tied to the sciences of Arabic? Can anybody understand that? Or give me a reason how we can say Tajweed is tied to the sciences of Arabic, or one of the sciences of Arabic. To be exact, it's tied to the science of Sarf. Sarf is what? The etymology, the breaking down of a word, right? Giving the history of a word. The word is built upon its letters. So it's tied to the science of Tajweed in that, taj I mean, it's science of Arabic in that Arabic deals with the letters. So if you learn how, the first thing you learn in Arabic is the letters. So if you learned how to recite the letters properly, what you learned is Tajweed. How to give the letters its rights, right? That's one. How is it tied to Qira'ah? Does everybody know what Qira'ah is? It's, right. It's the science of reciting the Qur'an in one of the seven modes, or some of the ulama say the seven modes don't actually exist anymore, but there are seven modes that are recited. By Ibn Mujahid, he put it in a book. He was the first one to, to gather them in one book and call them the, the Qira'at al Sab'a, the seven Qira'at. And even though he was blamed for that, you know, because there were more than that around at the time, those are the ones that have stuck. And so those are the ones that are considered classical, and those others, besides those seven, are considered shadh, right? So that science through which you study how to recite. For example, when we say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawmiddin That is the Qira'ah of Warsh. If we do it in Hafs, we say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawmiddin did you hear the difference? One said, Maliki Yawmiddin. And the other one said, Maliki Yawmiddin. This difference is what is studied in the science of Qira'ah. The different ways the Quran was revealed and the different ways that it is allowed to be recited. For this reason, originally, Tajweed was tied to Qira'ah, and it was one of the sub-sciences studied when you studied Qira'ah. Over time, it became mustaqillah, it became its own science, came into its own right, where it was studied away from the science of Qira'ah. Hatta, even today, most people don't even study Qira'ah. Most people now don't even study Qira'ah. If you recite in Warsh, or you recite in, in, in Duri or Susi or one of the, the known authentic classical ways of reciting Hamza, people might want to beat you. They think that you've broken up and made your own Qira'ah. I've even been accused of that before, you know, because they don't know. 
Did you know you can say anamta alayhim? I didn't make a mistake. I said zirat as opposed to sirat. This is authentic. That's allowed. That's another recitation as opposed to alayhim. Alayhim wa alayhum. These are different recitations. You just can't do it by yourself. You have to study the science of qira'ah. And in that you would learn the rules when you can do one and when you can do the other. Don't just start praying and say, No, that's wrong. Unless you know how to bring it from the beginning to the end. Okay, and knowledge precedes words and deeds. But that's the science of qira'ah, okay? Here, it's also tied to tafsir. We spoke about that previously. How by distinguishing the sounds and the words and making clear to the people which word, what we're actually saying, this is the first level, the first leaf in lifting off the cover of tafsir, which is explanation and elucidation of the meaning of the Qur'an, right? Let's go further, please. Do I have any questions? No. Seven and eight. Who started it? And what tools must we use? It is said that the scholars of Qira'a started it. We made it real general. Why? Because it's a beginner lesson. We can go into and give a, a, a longer explanation about Hafs and different and, and about Ali ibn Abi Talib and about the Prophet Sallallahu But it's, it's enough. Right? We're not right here at this level. We have to just keep it simple, keep it very simple, and learn what you can take at the beginning level. Once you get accustomed to it, then we can go and review this again, and then get a little bit deeper, and then get a little bit deeper, and get a little bit deeper. But right now, it's enough for us to know that it was started by the scholars of Qira'a. What do we mean by that? We mean by that that originally, Tajweed was studied during, amongst the sciences of Qira'a, when you learned the Qur'an. And when you learned the Qur'an, you just didn't learn Hafs and Asim. You learned all of the ways of reciting the Qur'an. And in that is the Tajweed of the Qur'an. Then, meaning they organized, when we say who started it, we mean who organized its rules and principles and said, okay, this is Tajweed and this is Qira'a. Who separated them? It became separated during the time frame starting from 118 after Hijrah. That's very early. That's very early after Hijrah, the first hundred years, now you're in 118, during that time frame up to 229 Hijrah, that was the time frame from the beginning to the end until it became, when I say during that time frame, it started to become its own science. People were starting to write books about Tajweed, not connected to Qira'a, not connected to Arabiya, not connected to um, sarf, um, a taj, a Tafsir. That started in 118 after Hijrah. And then by the time it came to 229 Hijrah, it was clear to many people that, hey, I'm just going to study Tajweed and I'm not going to study Qira'ah. You understand? So that's what I mean by that time frame. That during that time frame, it started to come, become on its own. And by 229 Hijrah, it was on its own. Okay? 